2021 NFL season is upon us, which also means it's that time of year when a new Madden game drops and we hope for some significant improvements. The first change is in the cover. Lamar Jackson gives way to Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, who is already the cover star for Madden NFL 20, and seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady, who was last featured in the cover for Madden NFL 18 when he only had five rings. But if you're watching this review and couldn't care less for cover art changes, well, unfortunately, that might be, once again, the biggest change for this year's iteration. Here is our review of Madden NFL 22. Every year, Electronic Arts drops countless buzzwords to describe all the significant changes they are bringing to the new Madden game. For Madden NFL 22, it was no different. We have the likes of Player Movement 2.0, Star-Driven AI, and Game Day Momentum. But are those truly meaningful changes or yet another batch of meaningless words? <sighs> Deep in your heart, you know the answer. The series versions of Madden NFL 21 released on December 4th of 2020, and it didn't really bring any significant improvements over the Xbox One version. Madden NFL 22, on the other hand, comes out on August 20th, only 259 days after last year's version. No publisher in the world can convince its fan base that it was enough time to deliver a true next-gen experience. But let's talk about what is new. Franchise mode has finally received some love with the inclusion of detailed staff management in a new skill tree progression system, as well as a new weekly strategy screen that lets you plan your game accordingly to capture your opponent's strengths, and that's it. To be fair, the studio behind the game says that franchise mode is part of a live service and it will continue to see improvements throughout the year, which includes the addition of scouting. But in my eyes, this looks more like a workaround for not being able to ship the game with all the planned features due to a ridiculously short development cycle, especially in a world in which COVID-19 is still very much a thing. Similar to the future inclusion of scouting to the franchise mode, EA Tiburon also promises some more big content coming to the Superstar KO mode later on. This season's version of Superstar KO has introduced NFL teams and playbooks, but once again, the rush to put out a new iteration every year leaves the players with the impression of an unfinished product. The same can be said about Face of the Franchise, Ultimate Team, and the Yard modes. There are some additions, but there's just not enough to justify buying the game once again at full price. And to make things work, EA has dropped its dual entitlement program, which granted players both the Xbox One and the series version of Madden NFL 21 if the game was bought before the launch of the next game. This also meant that if you want to buy the series version of this year's iteration, you have to spend $70 or the equivalent in your region. On a brighter note, the matches presentation looks as good as ever, and there were some welcoming improvements to the game's atmosphere. There are some new crowd animations, and the remastered audio brings the stadiums to life. The new home field advantage is also pretty cool, although it may feel a bit exaggerated at times. We have talked about how the game feels incomplete, and starting your franchise mode early in the season, knowing that you are not getting the full experience is already bad enough. but. Things get worse when we notice that we actually got a game that is still filled with bugs. If you browse EA's official forums, you will see pages and pages of players reporting bugs they encountered in the game, but there is one specific bug that can really kill the experience for some, and this is known as the loss glitch. There have been countless reports of players saying that even after winning some matches in their offline franchise mode, the game registered it as a loss. And that is by no means the only bug. Uh, during my playtime with the online franchise mode, I was constantly booted back to the main menu, which was really frustrating. Server disconnects and visual glitches were also frequent. And if you are an achievement hunter like me, beware. It is currently impossible to get the game's full completion because of two specific achievements not unlocking when they should. These are Momentum Stealer and Under Control. Men NFL 22 definitely tries to get things right, but the lack of competition turns it into its own worst enemy. The rush to release a new game every year during a period in which game development takes more time than ever results in an incomplete and bug-filled launch. 
EA Vancouver skipped the next-gen version of NHL 20 to try and knock things out of the park with NHL 22. Maybe EA Tiburon should have done the same with Madden. If they do not learn from their mistakes, they might stumble into the same fate they have with their own NBA Live series. Paying full price for what is fundamentally the same game as last year's version over and over again has always left a bitter taste in the fanbase's mouth. But for Madden NFL 22, the taste is even worse, since the game is also fundamentally the same as the last generation's version while costing $10 more. And don't get me wrong, Madden NFL 22 is a solid game for football fans, but it's also as good as it was three years ago. If you spend hundreds of hours playing the series every year, you should be happy with a few new additions and still get your money's worth. But if you only play a few matches here and there, you're better off just downloading a roster update on the previous year's version and waiting for NFL 22 to join the EA Play catalog or go into a deep sale. Thanks for watching. If you can, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help. And if you do subscribe, please tick that little bell so you know whenever we post. And we will see you here next time on Xbox Era.